Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 34 of Ultron the Real Robot, and we're going to give Ultron a new head. Ultron's a pretty awesome robot. He can hear you, he can see you, he can move and he can do all sorts of things and he's got emotions that get processed in a brain which is a bit of a, an art installation floating somewhere externally connected by Bluetooth. He's also got motion capture so he can be moved from a motion capture suit. But his head's always looked a bit silly so we're going to redesign a new one today and uh, hopefully that will make him look a bit more like Ultron. His head comes off with one easy connector here for all the electronics. And off we go. So that leaves this uh, stump here attached to the neck gimbal. His jaw here has a servo, but that's just on one pivot point. So as long as I design the new parts to fit on here, we can pop that right back on. So some of the changes I want to make are generally making his head look more like Ultron. Uh, also, we need to lose the eyebrows. He was going to have rubber eyebrows that could move around. Um, he's got rubber lips that were going to move. Those will probably become rigid. But what I want to do is have panels in the head that can kind of move and have gaps in between them to let the light out. Um, I also want to put the camera here so it's either in his eye or it's in square in his forehead in an actual hole and it pokes out. At the moment this is quite thick so we need to thin out, uh, sort of shell it out thinner um, so we can get all those things in. We also did hearing last time so he, can, he has stereo uh, seven band hearing. I'd like to put the microphones in his ears here somewhere to give good stereo separation, probably facing outward. So we need to do a new sculpt for the head, but I'm not that good at sculpting, which is how it ended up looking like it does now. So I've been thinking about how could I make it easier on myself, and how could I also adjust it later in real life, um, if the proportions are slightly off. So I've had a couple of ideas which we'll look at now. Right, so the original project for Ultron's head, here it is in fact, was done in Autodesk 123D Design and these are all the parts that I split up to print to make Ultron's head. That's the gimbal arm, um, these are the bits of the jaw and it was all uh, split up here to print flat on the bed so you can see um, each side of Ultron's head there. So uh, 123D Design is going away though unfortunately so um, I'm going to do the new one in Fusion 360 and Fusion 360 does actually have this um, sort of form or sculpt sculpt mode in fact where I can um, make kind of fluid objects and uh, let's just make a box there we go and then I can uh, maybe subdivide that up and then I can say I want to sort of uh, let's take these edges and we can sort of crease them okay and that makes them into sharper edges and uh, we can I don't know let's uh, pull in an outer face here so it just pulls that out we can do some some pretty weird stuff to it um, and th um, from there you know you can sculpt fluid things so it's much better than just the solid modeling and we do have the solid modeling in fusion as well however um, as you can see here and I've had a go with this I'm, I'm not really that good at sculpting as I say any more than I would be if I had a block of clay in fact I'd probably be better in clay um, so although I know how the functionality works in here there's lots of uh, of stuff we can do to this, um, it doesn't necessarily mean I can make Ultron's head look really great. So I'm going to take a slightly different approach. So what I'm actually going to do is take the same approach I did when I did Hulkbuster's body, and if you remember that was built on a frame, then I made some other 3D printed frame parts, and then I put sort of foam on and things like that. So we're actually going to make all of Ultron's head 3D printed, but I'm going to take the same approach where I actually make each individual piece and put it onto a frame so I can position them around. We're going to do most of that in CAD, but instead of doing one massive form, we're going to take individual pieces, go and uh, cut out contours and things and shape those up as solid models, um, and then position those around in space so that we can actually make the top and the sides and the bottom and the specific features of Ultron's head and position those in CAD here um, and then I can make a frame to hold them and we can look at the proportions, adjust it and even if I print them out and then in real life they don't match we can just adjust that frame out and make it slightly wider or whatever we need to do and we'll have gaps in between all the pieces so that um, the light shines through and we can also have some of those on hinges with servos so it can move to shift the shape of its face. Alright, so I've imported the uh, gimbal there from the head, so I've got something to scale and position it on, and uh, measuring basically with my hands and various things from the original head, this looks like where Ultron's nose is, so that's the first part, and I'm going to continue to uh, make the features of Ultron's face as individual pieces, sort of floating around this, and position them and try and get the scale right, then we'll make a frame to attach them to. So continuing to add bits and pieces, so essentially his mouth is here, that's his chin button, I've tried to put a bit on the chin there, again I'm just looking at reference pictures off Google Images, 
Um, uh, put his eyeballs in and some of the cheek stuff. So I think I'm going to do some stuff over the top of the head. And uh, hopefully these things are in the right place. But if they're not, then obviously we can just go and get them and uh, move them around and rotate them and things until it looks right. I've done a few more parts and I've also imported the ears from the... Uh, the old uh, 1, 2, 3D sketch there, so um, I've got those in there now, so uh, that's giving him a bit more stuff. I think I need to do some more stuff around the jaw there, really. I've got some of the top of the head done, and then there's lots of little fill-in sections with all the detail. I've put the mouth sides in just as placeholders, which are just cylinders stretched out a bit. So I think when he's got his jaw in there, that'll probably uh, set, up, set it off and um, fix some of the problems that I had with the first version. So I had a great plan, which was to import the old jaw from the old project and then stretch it around a bit to make it bigger. So I've actually got the back sections here that you can see uh, are in fact that, but I've cut them off and then modelled a new front of the jaw there to uh, make him a bit more menacing. So um, starting to take shape now. Um, pretty sure it's okay, not sure about this. We might need to move the angle of that, but obviously all these pieces, we can just go and get them and... Uh, kind of change the profile or whatever to um, make it fit wherever we need to kind of scale it out. So uh, pretty happy with the approach I've taken here. I'm going to continue to build the pieces. Obviously he's got massive holes in his head, but I'm pretty sure the form's looking not too bad at the moment. All right, so I've spent what I'll describe as a very long time, I think about eight hours in total modeling this. So um, I filled lots of these panels in. Some of these were a copy and paste with bits cut off. Some of them were um, a sphere cut in half, shelled out, and then it stretched and pulled and things to make it fit the contour. Um, I spent a very long time with the kind of teeth parts here, positioning most of these manually and then mirroring them to the other side to get them in the right place. I've done a little bit more contouring on that, but not very much. And uh, the only things from the old head are, of course, the ears and the backs of the jaws. The rest is completely new, so uh, much happier with this model than I was with the old one. There's still some detailing to do, and um, of course there's all of the frame to do to actually attach all these parts, because at the moment they're all just floating in space. Right, so here's a quick side to side with the original head, which is uh, this one on the left here. So uh, we can see it's quite thin in the front of the face and quite thin in the chin. But uh, this one's obviously quite a lot more uh, robust there. And in profile, of course, you can see it's got um, that sort of chin that pokes out. So it's much more of a stern jaw. And its head's actually probably bigger front to back as well. So the, this one was lacking really on the front of the head and the back there. And its head was a bit high at the top. So I've kind of compressed that down from the chin to the back of the head there. So... Uh, Altogether, yep, prefer the new one, I think, quite a lot. So uh, the, the old one looks a bit like a friendly dog or something, so uh, I think this one is a lot more Ultron. So obviously there's more details to do around the eye sockets and those cheek sockets, but um, I should probably do some surface detailing and get some stuff printing. Right, so I'm starting to piece this together so it can actually be made in real life. So I've merged all of the teeth in. I've put little blocks behind, so they're all merged into the jaw there. And there's a recess, but it doesn't go all the way through. And I've made this giant red piece, which um, sits on top of that yellow stick, uh, like the old head plugs on and off now. Um, and that's got cutouts in the top here for all of these panels. So if we go and hide some of these, you can see there's uh, some recesses there where those fit pieces fit perfectly on. So I've just subtracted them. Um, and that's the same for all of the back of the head. We're going to need another part, like an Alice band on the inside to hold the front together, hold the cheeks on and hold the nose in place. I'm not sure if the eyebrows are going to be um, on servos that hinge around, uh, but we'll come to that when we get there. I'm also starting to print the jaw here, which I've split into two halves. So um, we can try and print that as flat as we can on the bed, each half at least, um, and stick them back together in real life with a seam down the middle. Well, it's not very exciting looking, but this is the part that holds all the other parts together, pretty much, at the back at least. Here's one of my ears. I've decided, in fact, I'm going to make a separate mount for the microphones underneath, kind of poking out, rather than cut holes in them, so for now they're pretty much solid. This is the start of one half of the jaw, so you can see the bit touching the bill plate is uh, getting filled in, and the rest is support material for the hinge at the back, so we'll come back to that shortly. Well, here we are a few hours later. We're six hours 20 into this print, so I think it's going to be a good eight hour print, this one. And we've got the other side to do as well. 
Here are some of the other parts, and this one is my Alice band and the back of the head, so let's see where that fits on actual Ultron. So that should fit right back on the original stick. Yep, there we go, so that's his jaw servo, and that's the jaw pivot point, so now we can put some of the panels on to start building the head out. Right, so I've started to solvent weld these on, they're stuck on with acetone, because everything is printed in ABS, so these go uh, either side here, and I've made little keys in everything, so that they all slot together nicely, and everything fits together. Similarly, these pieces have holes in, and those plug in there, so um, basically it should be really easy to assemble with everything in the right place. We're getting there. Still some more pieces to attach to that frame. Right, so here are most of the head panels on, so we've got most of it, there's still the back of the head to do. And we need to fit the eyebrows in at the moment, he looks a bit surprised, or a bit like Shredder or something. We just need to put those eyebrows in to bring his eyes down, I've left them for now because I think they might be on hinges and servos. Here are all the jaw parts, so I made these extra parts here with the little pattern, there's actually a hole through that light can shine through, and this piece here which looks a bit like a seashell but it uh, gets nicely tucked under his ears. So there we go, that's the two halves stuck together, so I'm pretty happy with that. I want to put the eyebrows on hinges, so I've made this little hinge thing here. And that's going to fit inside, so that's going to go uh, in there, just on the bridge of his nose, with these little hinges poking out. In fact, it's the other way up, in fact. Just get some focus on that. And then the eyebrows are going to fit either side. They're going to attach on those hinges, push with servos, so they go in and out. And hopefully that's just the right angle. I don't want them hinging there, or there, or there, really. So I think that's just about the sort of right thing I can do. Obviously they can't really turn in the gaps. I've just attached a pair of servos to some brackets there, so they now move the eyebrows. It's a subtle movement, but that should just set it off. So the jaw is mounted on its uh, existing servo there, so that's all good. So let's pop the top of the head on now. There we go, so um, I think that looks pretty good. I've mounted the pixie cam in the hole in his nose. I was going to put it in one eye or up there, but actually you'd have to go so far back because of the contour here. So um, I think that it's a bit unsightly, but that'll do basically, and it's right there so it can see you. So um, short of getting the animatronics working, I think the only thing it really needs now is um, some eye socket detail, so it's not so empty headed. These are Ultron's eyes. They've got holes in so that the red light can shine through from the inside of the head, but otherwise they just fit inside. And I've printed these parts in red ABS and stuck them on. I think that looks about right. Just putting the electronics back in, that's my LED strip, that's my wire for my pixie cam. And all of that comes out to this big connector, those are the new servo wires and that's the one for the jaw. Here we are the lights on, we're just going to get him to do some vision recognition by waving the magic box in the air. Have a look at last time to see more about that. So that seems to be working pretty well, quite like the look of it. Now we just need to put those microphones back in the ears. I've got these little microphone modules and last time I had some big mics, I also tried tie clip mics and I had a mixer to uh, amplify the signal to bring it to line level. Well all of that happens on this board, so um, it's got the phantom power and it's got the uh, preamp, so that just gives me a line out, takes 5 volts in and I get audio out. So that's a much more compact solution. And uh, so basically I'm building them into these little earrings for Ultron, so this, the mics face outwards and I can position them around the head wherever I want with sticky pads and we can just try that and see how it goes and move them around if I have to. So I've mounted the microphones under each ear here, they're just stuck on with sticky pads so I can move them around if I need to and the audio cables run out to the main connector there. On the other side of the connector the wires run all the way down the bottom here to the MSG Q7 so have a look at last time the video to see how I'm doing the hearing. This is 7 band equaliser and stereo channels. So that seems to work pretty well, we can always tune up the levels and uh, select which one of those bands we want. I'm much happier with Ultron's head than I was with the first version, not sure about his button nose, we might have to move that camera and put a little grey cover on, but it's pretty good for now and all of the tracking and things works. So next time we're going to work our way back to the AI and sort out the brain, try and integrate those touch sensors. Last time I got all of that data off board to the brain, so now we've got hearing, seeing, and touch and we can work out what to do and how to manipulate the emotions. Have a look back on the previous videos for a skeleton outline of that. 
After that, we've just got a few cosmetic pieces to make and the project's pretty much finished. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and the other projects. You can also help fund my channel through Patreon.com. Most of my projects are funded through Patreon. Have a look at Patreon.com slash XRobots. And you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Also check out my t-shirt store, the links are in the description to this video. I have an exclusive design that's due to expire at the end of March 2017. Alright, that's all for now.